my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy, sometimes Mouse, and I talk about books and book related things. And today I am going to talk to you guys about my book blanket. So in 2021, I decided to make a book blanket and I will be showing you guys footage of not 2021, it's 2022. Well, I guess I decided in 2021. In 2021, I decided I would make a book blanket for 2022. And the idea for that book blanket kind of came from people making weather blankets. And I thought weather blankets were cool, but I live in Texas. So like the chances of um, there being a consistent weather at all or anything that would come out as a cool blanket was slim to none. So I decided to do a blanket based on the genres of the books that I was reading. So for every book I read, I did one crochet row of about 350 stitches and each genre was a different color. I've talked about this a few different times and when I show you the reel, the clip, the roll the clips of the blanket, I will show you what each of those genres meant, how much time it took me to do all of it, as well as how I fucked up. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you all of those things and then we can get started talking about my book blanket for 2023 because I actually loved this project and I plan on doing it again next year. Roll the clip! Now what you see me doing here is I somehow lost about 50 stitches um, in the last three to four months and so the blanket was weirdly not the same size consistently. So I added an edging here and basically what I was doing was doing um, single, double, or treble crochets, in, and that's US terms, sorry y'all, to, to kind of make it even throughout. It didn't 100% fix the problem and it's kind of ugly. Um, if I were to do this again, like this style of book blanket, I would definitely make sure that I count every 50 rows or so or 25 rows or so to make sure that my stitching is consistent. Um, but it was 290 rows of about 350, I believe. Yeah, 350 stitches. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I will say it didn't come out as wide as I expected it to, but that's okay. It is perfectly two people on my small couch size <laughs> like it is the perfect size for my couch um, for two people to be under it is not too heavy it is not too hot it's kind of the perfect blanket uh for me for my my life and, and what i have going on so i'm pretty pleased with that part for sure I also did a different stitch specifically for the switch of each month do i remember what that stitch is called right now off the top of my head no but I did do it. And you can kind of see here, this is before I added the edging. You can kind of see here how when it gets smaller, I was, had started doing the edging, but not fully. You can see where it gets a little bit different in size. And uh, yeah, so like each month you can see the separation there between the different styles of stitches, which I do think is cool. I think for my book blanket next year, I will absolutely be continuing to change up the stitching style per month so that it kind of shows a differentiation between month to month, but this is it. Here she is. This is the edges, like I well, from the beginning when I first started edging them. Um, obviously, they got quite large, but yeah. And here is my husband's cat and I on the blankets, it, in all its glory. It's like I said, it's pretty perfectly me sized, so I'm not mad about it. I can wrap myself up in it pretty easily, and um, I can use it long ways or um, horizontally, and it works out really well. I did wash it since for originally doing it so now it's pretty the yarn is pretty soft and loose which is the fun part about yarn if you didn't know that if you tie your projects up nicely you can uh, toss them in the dryer i do a full wash but you can toss them in the dryer on a not too high setting and it will um it'll loosen up the yarn and make it softer um, and here's more footage of me kind of basically pulling the yarn through and tying it off so that it won't fall apart in the dryer like i said uh, this process is probably my least favorite part of crocheting anything at all ever is, is this because it takes such a long time. So I'll do it during a slow meeting or something just because it's tedious and I don't know. Meh, meh. And I think there's like a better way to do this, but I, no one's taught me and I haven't like figured it out yet. Like I think there's a better way to weave all of these ends in, but it makes me nervous that it's not actually going to stay um, woven in. I don't know. I don't know. But, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> For 
2023, I have a few different ways that I'm going to be keeping track of the way that I'm reading as well as the ways that I'm going to be keeping track of that stuff with crochet. Now, you guys know that crochet has become kind of the thing that I do when I'm not reading or the thing that I do while I am reading if I'm listening to an audiobook. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing, and I already have everything printed out here, is I have this notebook from the Quirky Book Collective. In this notebook, I've already gone ahead and printed out my breakdown of this. So this is going to be the color coordination for the 2023 book blanket. For fantasy, I have this really pretty uh, sparkly purple color. For sci-fi, I have a kind of gray color. Thriller, I have a kind of blue color. For horror, I have a pink color. For romance, I have a baby pink color. And for other, I have white. I also plan on doing this, which I'll show better clips of those pan over to explain them a little bit more. I will be writing down the total genres as well as the total time that I crocheted, the total rows and the width of the blanket thus far. I will also go ahead and break down my stats month to month in here so then when I come to the end of the month I can just read it off of here instead of having my iPad or something and I feel like this gives kind of a whimsical fun way of doing it and I printed off these for the entire um, year and I think that this will uh I think it'll be I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a fun time. So we'll see how that goes. I also have the reading journal from the Quirky Book Collective, which looks like this. Now this reading journal is really really cool because it has a lot of different fun features, which I will be showing you guys in a moment. Um, there's a fun contents. There's a bookshelf, reading goals, a to-do list, and reading tracker. My plan for the reading tracker is to predominantly use, or well, not the reading tracker, but like the reviews, the quick reviews part. I'm going to put all of the books that I'm reading in the quick reviews part and then for the long reviews I will mostly be doing things that I am reviewing for actual um, books that are going to go on my blog. Now as things progress I may get fewer and fewer advanced reader copies or things that are sent to me as reviewing. We'll see and if that's the case then I may switch over to reviewing books that I'm not getting any kind of like free book for or anything like that. It's kind of dependent and we will definitely see. But this will be a good way for me to keep up with those genres as well because it has a spot for the genres in the quick reviews section. So that's my plan on that. Now, for the book blanket itself, I decided I wanted to go kind of classic. So I showed you guys the colors already, but what I wanted to do with the book blanket is do granny squares. Now, I <laughs> like granny squares a lot, but I don't have a lot of experience with them. And it's pretty standard classic old lady crochet, right? Like when you think of crochet, you probably think of granny squares when you think of crochet projects. Now, my plan is to have every other block that I do. So say that this is fantasy, right? And this is just like your standard block. So this would be for one book of fantasy, then say I read another book of fantasy, well then I've got kind of a whimsical fun block. So for every other one, we'll have like a standard one and a fun block. So this is my plan for the fantasy ones, but I may switch it up. That's the other fun part of this. My other plan also to make sure that I'm kind of consistent and can remember which is which, is that even on the fun ones, the inside can be any color, but the border will always be the color that that genre is. So purple for fantasy. I have got a little heart guy for romance here. And then this standard. Now this is going to change the the like fun standard granny square. That part's going to change depending on my mood or whatever. I've got a couple of, <laughs> of these ones but I'm, this is this one was the first skull I did and she's kind of ugly. But anyway <laughs> this is a better skull. And then we've got your standard. This is what I have for sci-fi. A little star, which is kind of fun. And then of course just the standard granny square. This also means that like there will be a fewer like holes and such because I don't do really lace styles, lace style granny squares. So it means that like there will be fewer things for the blanket to catch on. We have this for other, which I thought this was kind of a fun way of doing other. And this is also kind of a fun way for me to use my scrap yarn because like I've had this rainbow yarn for a while and I don't know what to do with it. So this is kind of a fun way to use it. Um, and then again, standard. And for this, we've got a little ghost boy. Look at him. <laughs> Just your little ghost guy. And the standard. These yarns I got from Hobby Lobby because it is the craft store that is closest to me. I will also probably be trying to do like a price breakdown of how much this project costs as a whole month over month. 
uh, and then obviously at the end of the year that wrap up. Now this is going to be interesting because I don't plan on putting the squares together until the end of the month and that also means that I could have a completely different I kind of will get to decide how big this blanket is going to be, how wide, how tall, whatever, based on how many books I have. Now, I haven't really decided if I'm going to do it every month or every other month where I'm going to put everything together, but I am going to make sure that the pieces that are linked together are the like month to month, like the correct month to month, and that they have like a piece of thread or a stitching method that's different every month that's different uh, each time so that I can kind of distinguish like this was this month and this was February and then, you know, Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it every single month uh, because again, the, the amount of blocks can vary and as somebody who hasn't been reading a ton, I will need to kind of figure that out, but I'll definitely be piecing them together to get ideas of it every month just to kind of see what we've got, right? But that's it. That's my book blanket and my plan for 2023. I've seen a lot of people uh, doing this project because of mine and I think that that's super cool. I've found it pretty inspirational and fun and I'm very thankful to see everybody thought that it was a cool idea and decided to participate along with me. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was pretty short and sweet. If you didn't enjoy this video, I'm sorry, I'm not planning on making a ton of them. <laughs> but if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And you can leave a comment down below if you're making a book blanket or something similar. And um, let me know your ideas for that. I think that they're very cool to hear about. Um, and that's it. I will see you guys on Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and then again on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time almost every single week. There have been some times I've missed it, but you know, life's been a little bit hectic lately. I hope you guys drink your water and take your muds and do something today to take care of yourselves. Okay, thanks, bye.